wow, what an unusual time. I never anticipated a year ago we would be sitting in an empty Fenway Park kicking off inbound. Yeah, I think it's going to be fun. It feels a little bit surreal sitting here at uh, Fenway Park yep. instead of being amidst all the uh, inbound goers. It's not the same as other years. We miss all the humans, but great, great opportunities for, for attendees to connect with each other. I think that's going to be the best part. Online events are actually great for antisocial people like me. It's like I get to connect. I live on social media, so this is going to be great. <laughs> What's truly unique about what's going on right now is there's three major crises at the same time, and all three crises are impacting businesses in a major way, impacting HubSpot, impacting your business. Uh, you know, there's certainly a health crisis going on. There's an economic crisis, and there's a crisis of conscience happening right now. And you know, I went to business school 15 years ago. They didn't have any classes on W-shaped economic recoveries. They didn't have any classes on worldwide pandemics. They didn't have any classes on woke leadership. So I'm trying to figure out as I go along here. And it's honestly, it's been really challenging and in some ways really interesting. It's certainly been an interesting six months. Um, more changes happened in this last six months than the last 16 years. Ah, you know, there's no training for this. There's no playbooks. And it's this. different than when we were all in the office together relating face to face. I think what's important for folks to realize is that this is not yet the new normal, right? There's nothing normal about us sitting here in Fenway Park in an empty stadium. There's nothing normal about millions of people being in quarantine. There's nothing normal about our kids spending more time on Zoom than we are, right? It's not normal yet. That's something that's hard for me personally. I bet. There's kind of two dials I have that have changed quite a bit. I have peacetime mode and I have wartime mode. And holy crap, has it been wartime in the last six months? I mean, it's impacting everything we're doing. Yep. I think the role of technology is really changing. And that's something my team's really thinking about. Everybody from my first grader kids to my retiree parents are relying on technology, not just for productivity, but for every kind of human connection right now, so. You feel like a uh, heavier responsibility? I feel like there is a responsibility on product teams. You know, we're reaching out to each other to work, but also just to connect on a human level. I think one of the skills that forward-looking companies need to lean into is they need to be able to think about how do we run our office on Zoom? How do we run our company on Zoom? How do we run it on Slack? I don't think like the amount of collaboration that happened over time was going up. It's gone through the roof in the last couple of years. I don't think we're going back to 2019. I think 2022, 2023 looks a lot more like today. And great managers and great leaders figure out how to lead through Zoom and lead through Slack. I just think back to when I was a kid and my dad, every morning, you know, he'd get up and put his start shirt on, his Brooks Brothers suit, his hard sole shoes, and drive to General Electric every day. And they do it again on Saturday morning. He had to go to the office to get anything done. And contrast that with, with myself. You know, I wake up every morning and I put a nice shirt on, but I wear my pajama bottoms and I don't wear any shoes. I'm in front of Zoom all day. Big, big changes. For me, I'm kind of hardwired to think of change equals opportunity. So I'm cautiously optimistic for forward-looking companies that lean into this change and come out the other side in a better in a better place. There's an opportunity to kind of really leverage the change, to kind of, kind of survive in the new normal, if you will. Yeah. And thrive in the new normal. Yeah. You know, I have a strange hobby. Uh, I kind of fashion myself as like a social anthropologist. I, I look at the way human behavior is changing and try to think how, how can companies change the way they work to match that. And it's that odd little hobby that I have that led to, you know, the idea of inbound marketing that Dharmesh and I came up with in HubSpot in the first place. That humans were changing the way they shopped and the way they learned and the way they made purchase decisions and marketers need to change the way they go to market to match it. Today feels similar to me where employees are really changing. They're really changing their expectations of their employers, of their leaders, and companies, well, modern companies, need to change the way they think about all that stuff and match it up with a modern employee. It's a very interesting time. And I think forward-looking companies that take advantage of these changes and lean into them will really benefit post-COVID. You, know, you talk a lot about this change that's happening and, and companies are adjusting, some better than others. But some companies um, are kind of making the minimal changes, kind of holding on, it's like, oh, we're just gonna do these little things and we're gonna hope that the world goes back to the way it was. This is not a fad, this is the future, right? Yes. It's, uh, you know, you, we see too many companies sometimes uh, hugging the, the past too hard. It's like, yeah. okay, I'm just waiting for it to kind of go back to the way it was. And as sad as it makes me feel, it's the reality is you can't turn the clock back and party like it's 1999. I'm still an optimist. I think we'll be able to party in 2029, yeah. but we need to get these changes in place and they're gonna be long enduring. 
One of the most interesting things that's gone on in, in my industry, really all our industries, the front office industry, the tech industry, marketing and selling, is, boy, supply and demand have really gotten out of whack. Most companies now, if they were very office-centric, they're gonna be on some sort of a spectrum where they encourage diversity. So you've, you're going in your company from competing with a couple of local companies that you know, you're, you're competing for talent with, so you're competing for talent with everybody across the country. You're competing with HubSpot, with Google, with every company out there. So supply and demand is going to get tougher. The market for great employees is going to get harder. I think great companies are going to have to step up their culture game to attract and retain great people. Brian and I have been obsessed with culture at HubSpot since the early days. And we think of culture as a product. We build a product for our customers. And culture is the product that we build for our people, for our team. Now there are three features that have always been in demand uh, since the early years of HubSpot. Number one is people want an aligned mission. They want a mission that they can kind of get behind. Number two is they want remarkable autonomy. They want the ability to make decisions, even wrong ones sometimes. And that's the best way for them to learn. And three is they want brilliant peers. They want colleagues that they respect, admire, and enjoy. Now, since COVID, we still have all those three features. They're still very much in demand, but there are three new ones that have kind of popped up and have uh, an upward sloping curve. Number one, people are looking for flexibility. Flexibility in terms of where they work from and what hours they work. Number two is they want transparency from the culture. They want to know what's going on inside the companies and inside the leaders' heads. And number three, they want diversity. And the reason they want diversity is the best people want to work on the best teams. And the best teams are diverse teams. So if you want to thrive in the new normal, the way to do it is to build a culture that meets the demands of the best people. You have to put those features in. At HubSpot, uh, we've been leaning in hard on diversity and inclusion for a while now and made really good progress. I'm proud of the progress we've made. And our diversity and inclusion initiatives have been really internally focused and we've, we've tried to walk the walk and, and, and talk the talk. We're starting to talk a lot more externally about it. We feel like it's our responsibility to try to move the needle. Here's the thing about history, and it's, whether it's the history of racial injustice or the history of business, people think it marches, and there's this march of history. It doesn't. It crawls. And then once in a while, it leaps. We're mid-leap right now. Uh, when I think of racial injustice, uh, it's really crawled. There was a big leap in the 1960s. There's another big leap happening right now in 2020. And What's different about the late 60s and today is I think corporations like HubSpot and others can play a role in it, that can speak out about it and can, can help move that needle. And I think in 2030, when people look back at today, at least for myself, I want to be proud of the, of the part we played in trying to move that needle and being part, proud of that leap that's going on in society today. I have a renewed empathy for our customers. We've been talking to our customers a lot and you hear these stories of you know, how they're dealing with change and how they're just trying to kind of push through it and survive. It's, uh... You know, I've always thought of HubSpot as a relatively empathetic company and really understanding our customers. Uh, this has really brought to light how important that is. Yeah. You don't just treat customers with uh, remarkable respect, but with exceptional empathy. And one of the things I love is kind of what we've been doing kind of to get in the minds of customers mm -hmm. and really understand them. Mm -hmm. I kind of think of HubSpot as for a long time, we were obsessed with that relationship between ourselves and the prospect. Over time, we shifted that and we we're obsessed with our relationship with ourselves and our customers. I think that's been healthy and we've done a whole series of things that have brought us closer to our customers and increased that empathy. Like some of the stuff I like that we're doing is we do that monthly staff meeting that's all about the customers. We have the customers I come love in. that I meeting. Love By that the way, meeting. it's it's not just that we get to hear from customers, we get to do it together as a group. Yes. So we have this kind of collective yes. experience yes. hearing the hearing customer's the, pain. Their <laughs> hearing needs. that pain together is, uh, is useful. Well, every time we have a company meeting, we have a customer present at the company meeting. Like we've really become much more customer centric. I think there's going to be two types of companies that come out of this. There will be companies that are leaning into the changes that are happening now or leaning into online marketing, inside selling. And there's companies that are just trying to get back to 2019. I think the future, 2022, looks a lot more like today than it does like 2019. So I'm very optimistic for companies leaning into the future right now. A lot of companies are relying on outside selling. A lot of companies are relying on offline marketing. But beyond that, I think there's a lot more people have to do. And I, and I kind of think of it's almost like a food chain where you got companies that are very human-centric go-to-markets, where most of the interaction is human-to-human. -human, and they have companies like all the way on the other end 
that you only can deal with computers. Like if you're dealing with Google, it's computer to computer. Um, I think people need to kind of slide in between where those humans need to rely on computers more to make them more effective, to give them leverage. So that's one step down. Another step down is more, gosh, much of that interaction is online. Much of that interaction is self-service with humans really helping those computers and accelerating that. So what I think we're seeing happen is forward-looking companies are starting to slide down that food chain. A lot of HubSpot customers I kind of think are here and are sliding here. That makes sense. What do you think? Here, here's how I think about it. And I promise there's no math involved. <laughs> Good. Actually, there's a little math involved. Um, I think trust is more important than ever, likely because it's scarcer than ever. And trust is this abstract thing. Um, so what I like to do is like to think about trust like an engineer thinks about trust. Um, well, Shocker. I like to think about everything Shocking. like really an engineer shocking. thinks about things. Um, so simple math, I promise it's not too heavy. The way I think about it, trust is this kind of prediction score. So it, the trust score for a company is the probability that they're going to do something good, the thing you expect, minus the probability they're going to do something evil, the thing you don't expect, right? So we've been focused on this. It's like, okay, is there predict are they gonna deliver on the thing that I want? But there's also this side that's shown up a lot more lately in terms of doing the things I didn't want them to do. And it's that kind of interplay that's, that's important. So how does this help companies thrive in the new normal? Realize that your customers are looking at you with much more scrutiny now than they ever have, which is actually good news. You have the ability to stand out, to recognize that trust is going to be important for the long term and they recognize that every decision you make, every action you take will either improve your trust score or it will decrease it and act accordingly. I like that, Darmesh. Here's how I kind of think about trust. Since 2006, we started HubSpot. Like the importance of trust has been going up and to the right. I think the reason that's been going up and to the right is that people don't trust anybody anymore. They don't trust the media. They don't trust the government. Just like there's a major trust deficit going on. They don't, certainly don't trust marketers and sellers. This importance of establishing trust me going up, I think COVID has pushed it up like this. So totally right. if you want to thrive in the new normal, you've got to maximize that trust score. Kind of how we came up with inbound in the first place, kind of how we came up with HubSpot. It's looking the way people shop and learn and buy and helping companies adjust to that. Holy cow, is there a lot of change going on these days. The early adopters of inbound marketing, wow, did really great. I think the people who are early adopters of the best practices going on today, they're gonna do great coming out of this. So whether you're a marketer or a seller or chief revenue officer, ops person, I don't think you want a Band-Aid. I kind of think you want to lean into these changes. I have a nine-year-old son, Brian, as you know, and uh, just the other day, he was like, Daddy, no, you don't have to worry about telling me where babies come from. I have a friend in his late 11s. I'll figure that out. <laughs> what I really want to know is like, how have buyers changed? <laughs> yeah, what yeah. should companies be doing yeah. to kind of thrive in the new normal? Yeah. <laughs> And, and so my response to that is, you know, buyers are human. You're human. I'm mostly human. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the question is, like, if you want to know how buyers have changed, like, ask yourself, have I, how have I changed? So chances are, Brian, you're not taking a whole lot of in-person meetings. You're not allowing yourself to be wined and dined by some salesperson. Chances are your time is even more scarce than it used to be. And chances are you have, like, zero patience for, for someone else's sales process. You're just like, just let me friggin' buy the thing. And so... For companies to thrive in the new normal, what they need to do is deliver a purchasing experience that matches the customer's new normal, not their old normal. That's how you thrive. Yeah, one of the things that I think companies need to do to thrive in the new normal is kind of sand down the rough edges in their products, of course, but also their go-to-market. Exactly, yeah. So we, you know, we, we're good at finding bugs in our product and fixing those bugs. Yeah. Um, and we're doing the same thing, applying the same kind of approach to the purchasing process. Yeah. Like, what are the bugs in there? And so HubSpot um, has a product called Marketing Hub, which is priced based on the number of contacts in your database. Uh, and that made complete sense back in the day because that's how everybody prices a marketing product. But turns out HubSpot's not just in the marketing business. We have HubSpot CRM now, so we're in the CRM business as well. And the bug that we uncovered is that there were lots of customers that said, you know, I want to keep all my contacts in HubSpot CRM but I don't necessarily need to market to all of them. And what customers were doing, and this is, gives me nightmares, is they were putting them like in two different, like I'll keep all my contacts over here in CRM, and then I'll keep another set of contacts over in, in Marketing Hub. Uh, that was a major bug. So in October, customers of Marketing Hub 
can use the CRM and store as many contacts as they want and only pay for the contacts that they want to market to in terms of Marketing Hub. So how can companies apply this idea to thrive and grow better? It's really quite simple. You need to dig into your purchasing experience, find every little bug, especially the bugs that really bite customers in the crisis, and fix those bugs. Mm. One of the things I love about the things your team is doing on, on the product side is around kind of solving for what we think of as like the time to joy. It's like, I bought this thing, how long before I experience joy? In the old kind of enterprise world, it's like you may never experience joy, not one. Uh, and in the off chance that you might experience a little bit of joy, it'll be like weeks, months, or years in advance. And now it's like people's like, yeah, I bought this thing. I want to start feeling joy like the same day. That's the thing we're solving for is how can we make it quick and easy to get started and start getting value? I think that's one thing that's shifted. What I think is super cool about uh, the product team at HubSpot is a couple of years ago, you guys made a giant investment in user research and design and we're starting to get you know, returns on that investment. It's, we're well known for easy to use, but this is the year we started adding sort of legit power to the platform and watch out. I think the company is doing really well these days and, and the product's really stepped up, so I'm, I'm super proud of what's going on. HubSpot is here to help you adapt to any new normal that comes your way. Over the past year, we've been working to add deep flexibility and power into our already easy to use software. Let's begin as we often do, hearing from a customer we truly admire. SurveyMonkey's mission is to power the curious. We enable organizations to turn feedback into action. We're proud to work with over 335,000 organizations globally in helping them gather customer feedback, gather feedback from their employees so that they can then take action on it and make the world a better place. SurveyMonkey got started uh, about 20 years ago and for the first 17 years of that period was uh, exclusively a self-serve organization, so selling online to uh, a sort of transactional manner. Uh, about three, three and a half years ago, the company began selling into the enterprise and that really uh, led to an acceleration um, of growth. And uh, so we've been continuing to accelerate growth as we continue that expansion into the enterprise, which means that we need enterprise grade technology uh, to do exactly that on the marketing side. So when I think about what technology should do for your marketing team on the marketing automation side, it should accelerate you, it shouldn't slow you down. It should help you, not hinder you. And uh, above all, I think we're all so spoiled by consumer tech these days. It should be a pleasant experience. It should be easy to use and intuitive for the team. And if I'm honest, uh, prior systems that we were using really didn't deliver on those things. So that was really uh, the thing that drove us to, to take a look at the landscape and figure out which technology would best suit our needs. And that was what led us to HubSpot. As a result of adopting HubSpot, I can tell you my team is doing cartwheels. It's, uh, that's barely an exaggeration. So when you think about bringing a more streamlined approach um, to the way you operate, uh, what we've been able to do is literally improve by a factor of 10 um, the speed and the simplicity with which we're working. So for example, uh, with our web forms, we've gone from having 10 separate forms to one. We've gone from having something like 120 uh, form fields and hidden values in those forms down to about 12. And uh, with the result that everything that we do is faster, it's more streamlined, the team can move more, more nimbly, and that enables us to get more done. It's almost hard to think about this year as a marketer without just sitting down and taking the deepest breath you can. It, uh, it's just been a crazy year for all of us. Um, as I think about the new normal for marketers, this is definitely an era in which agility and flexibility are at a premium. You need to be working in a streamlined way. You need to be as efficient as possible because uh, especially as marketers, we're often being asked to do more with less or, or what we have. And so I really think that that becomes uh, super important. Uh, another aspect of this world, given that we're all working remotely and having to communicate across the miles is having a single source of truth and being really clear and consistent and aligned on the metrics in the business and what's going on. And we found that with HubSpot's help, we have a much more streamlined, clear, and single source of truth that we can, we can relate to in these times. Clearly, as you invest in new systems, you do that with a long-term uh, view in mind. And it was really important to me and my team that we found uh, the technology that we thought would scale with us. We are in fast growth mode at SurveyMonkey. Our enterprise business continues to really accelerate. Our self-serve business is also super robust. And as we continue to think about our tech stack, that scalability is super important. And so uh, with that in mind, HubSpot was uh, the perfect partner that we chose in, the, uh, in the, the process. And we're really confident that that system is going to scale with us as we grow.
Okay, this is mind blowing. Did you know that the average B2B deal involves 6.8 stakeholders? It's not just sales selling deals, it's everyone, especially marketing right beside them. To thrive as a business, you need to change the way you do business. And that starts with how you build relationships with your customers. Let's talk about ABM, account-based marketing. You see, ABM is all about sales and marketing working together to close deals at a specific set of target accounts. Unlike conventional volume-based marketing approaches, ABM is all about creating targeted, personalized content to attract and engage key contacts all across companies. It's about getting your brand inside the building and into daily conversation at target accounts. In May, we launched a new set of native ABM tools, now available across both sales and marketing hubs. Things like company scoring, default ABM properties, company-based list, AI-powered target account recommendations, and ABM reporting. And like all of our products, we have integrations with many of the tools you already use for ABM, including LinkedIn, Sigster, and Slack. Let's keep the focus on targeted content. Personalization is a necessity in this new normal. As more marketers continue to run the same playbooks, your customers are starting to tune out your content, the same stuff they once found really helpful. To thrive as a business, you need to change the way you market. And that starts with how you communicate with your customers. I think it'll come as no surprise that 80% of customers are more likely to make a purchase when you offer a personalized experience. Today, Marketing Hub unlocks even more ways to personalize your marketing using HubSpot data with big improvements to email personalization, ad targeting, and conversational marketing. It will definitely help you keep up with changing customer expectations. This is probably my personal favorite brand new advanced targeting in HubSpot conversations. Now you can trigger unique chat flows based on a visitor's country or their previous activity on your site, or whether the viewer is in a particular list. It's pretty nuts. And what do you get? Well, better engagement rates and a more relevant customer experience. But how do you know this personalization is working? How do you know you're thriving in the new normal? Reporting, that's how. The key to driving personalized customer experiences is connected data. When your data is connected, you can tie every marketing interaction to key conversions and revenue, so you can identify trends and optimize the buying journey for future customers. Last year, we launched multi-touch revenue attribution. Today, here's an even bigger step, a brand new custom report builder that pulls in even more of your HubSpot data. Reporting is no longer limited to standard HubSpot objects like contacts, companies, deals, and tickets. As the world changes, your reporting needs to be able to stay one step ahead of every new normal. To pull custom reports in HubSpot on every object and event, including your emails, ads, social posts, campaigns, and more. We've also expanded product limits on reporting in the majority of HubSpot portals. So your HubSpot reporting adapts to every change that comes your way. We're seeing the world's fastest growing brands scaling beautifully with Marketing Hub Enterprise. We love Trello for one and they've scaled their content strategy internationally, launching HubSpot-hosted blogs in five languages. They didn't just grow their organic traffic by 40%, they cut their publication time in half while doing it. And the list goes on. Airstream, Monday.com, and many other global enterprises are flourishing as they grow and change. 2020 has been a huge year for Marketing Hub, to say the least. But one of the biggest improvements we've made for marketers in 2020 isn't in Marketing Hub at all. It's actually a brand new product line, specifically for building and managing web experiences. We're thrilled about this web ops movement, and there's no one better to tell you about it than our friends at the World Wildlife Fund. At WWF, we want people to understand that nature is more than just the forests that you go visit on a weekend or elephants in the Serengeti a long way away. That actually nature is the water that we drink and the power that comes out of our sockets. We are working to sustain the natural world for the benefit of people and nature and working to create a world where people and nature can thrive together uh, in a sustainable and harmonious way. One of the problems that we've typically had with our um, web systems to date is the integration with things like our CRM and our emails and our social media just wasn't there. And these were all very on, um, existed on very disparate systems. So our emails are sent through one system, our content is managed through another, and then our social media is managed through yet another. And that makes it really hard to produce an integrated comms approach. 
So what we were looking for when we were in, uh, investigating a new technology solution for Earth Hour is a way we could bring those all together um, and unite them to be able to deliver really targeted um, communications messages throughout the range of our channels that we had with the ease and flexibility to be able to deliver really great content to our users. And that's why we, in the end, settled on HubSpot as a solution, because not only did it have that content management system that allowed to us to replace our website almost uh, like for like, but also to then integrate in our other comms channels that allows us to target and segment audiences and be able to map a user throughout the full journey of their experience across all of those various touch points. So like many organizations around the globe, uh, we've had to pivot and change a lot in light of the COVID response. Um, and the ability for us to really quickly change and update our content, but also contact our supporters and let them know what we're doing and how we are changing the work that we do and our approach to our conservation work around the globe has been so important. Uh, HubSpot has really allowed us to quickly go on and update content um, at a moment's notice as we've needed to, but also use the other comms channels that we have at our disposal, including our email and our social media channels to effectively target those people who we know are interested in specific areas of our work and let them know how that has been changed and what we are doing to address the new normal and the world that we are living in today. It, it's so much of what we do that can be affected um, by, the, by the realities of the new normal and the world we're living in. And, and what that really means is that our staff are stretched and we have uh, fewer resources at our disposal. And a lot of these um, events and moments that we've been building up to for, for years now have actually had to change, have gone online, have moved. And we've had to really drastically and quickly change our plans in, in retaliation to that. Um, and HubSpot's been really useful for us over the last few months uh, with activations such as Earth Hour, we've been able to change how we've approached our communications with our users, letting them know how and when events are changing around that particular moment. And actually personally, as I think of the year ahead, it's, uh, it's, it's the worries that come for the lack of clarity that we know about what's going to be happening and how quickly we might need to change again when um, other situations arise over the coming months. Because the success we've had with HubSpot to date, we really see HubSpot continue to grow and develop with us over time and we are excited about working, um, continuing to work with HubSpot over the coming years um, as we continue to grow and think about other ways we can integrate HubSpot into our supporter journeys. CMS Hub is easy enough that the team can build amazing interactive experiences in seconds. Whether you're a marketer, web developer, or in IT, you can get what you need, style, security, reliability, with CMS Hub. As a modern web developer, you'd expect to be up and running immediately. HubSpot leads the pack of this exciting new generation of web operations platforms, a new way of creating web experiences that makes developers and marketers more powerful than ever. Here's the ideal developer experience. A clean command line interface gets you running and deploying a fully scaffolded boilerplate site in literally seconds. Every change you make shows up instantly while you still get to keep using your favorite existing power tools like Visual Studio and GitHub. You can create custom modules, templates, themes, anything you can imagine, and easily and instantly have your changes sync to HubSpot. Our CMS is state-of-the-art for modern web devs. This is the workflow you'll reach for when inspiration strikes, trust me. It lets you do unfairly cool and powerful things that clients or folks around the office just won't even believe. Here's what's so magical though. Everything the developer creates materializes to the marketer. With most platforms, the marketer still needs a developer to make changes, but not here. It's all super flexible and drag and drop for the marketer once synced up to HubSpot. The marketer can go nuts, add modules, change button sizes, even embed videos quickly and easily in a matter of seconds. Need to create a custom graphic? You can do that without leaving your HubSpot account using the brand new Canva integration. Click the Canva button from any of your HubSpot pages. Design a custom graphic using over 60 million photos, illustrations, and icons, and insert it right into the page. You can access Canva anywhere you upload files in HubSpot too. Your website's just the beginning. Once your content feels right, you can optimize your page for search. We've built over a decade of SEO best practices into CMS Hub right off the shelf. Update your page and watch your SEO scorecard change as you make improvements. 
If your IT team isn't bought in, your website is dead on arrival. Good news, CMS Hub Enterprise provides speed, reliability, and security with features like activity logs, single sign-on support, out-of-the-box SSL, DDoS prevention, and much more. CMS Hub is a developer's dream without becoming a marketer's nightmare. CMS Hub is now available in two tiers. Professional, which helps you build a beautiful website to grow your business, and Enterprise, which gives scaling companies even more power and control over their online presence. Don't just build a website, build a phenomenal customer experience. An engaging website is the backbone of a great customer experience, but expectations are higher than ever. Over 80% of consumers say a great customer experience is one of the most important factors in making a purchase decision. And more than half of consumers say it's even more important now in light of COVID-19. To thrive as a business, you need to change the way you delight your customers. That's why we're continuing to make big investments in Service Hub to help your customers and frontline service team without sacrificing operational efficiency. To help you delight your customers, We've built a new channel where you can answer their most pressing questions. In-app chat is now in beta, joining Facebook Messenger, web chat, email, and forms inside the conversations inbox. You can now easily chat with customers while they're logged into your web app or welcome visitors with dynamic messaging. Customer experience is crucial, but can't come at the expense of your team's efficiency. Service Hub now has out-of-the-box service automation tools that save your team time. Use an automated bot to manage common interactions, like answering FAQs or informing a visitor of your team's hours of availability. Or you can use automated workflows to trigger actions when tickets reach a certain status. There's also a new native integration with Jira. It keeps your support and engineering teams perfectly aligned, saving you time and creating a smooth customer experience. Service reps can create Jira issues right from a ticket record or attach an existing JIRA issue to a ticket and you can automate your ticket process with workflows. It isn't just your company that has to learn how to adapt to an ever-changing world, but your customers as well. Service Hub is here to help you and your customers thrive in the new normal. Our marketing, CMS, and Service Hubs have seen huge improvements this year, not just in power, but also in ease of use and flexibility. But when it comes to sales software, many companies are still settling for clunkiness and complexity. Our next customer, Cancer IQ, was too. Then they switched to HubSpot, and their experience with sales software completely changed. Cancer IQ's mission is to use genetic and genomic information to help providers better predict, preempt, and hopefully prevent disease, starting with cancer. We take really complex information and simplify it so that people can actually empower themselves in any community to deliver precision healthcare, a more tailored and genome-based approach to medicine. Really just how we worked in the beginning. It was very inefficient. We started off using HubSpot purely as a marketing tool. And as soon as it was time to uh, convert that into an actual deal opportunity, uh, you know, I would take all that information and copy it into Salesforce. But as we started to scale, it, it really didn't make any sense to have two different platforms. And I think one of the things that really helped us choose the HubSpot sales CRM um, really about that user experience. So we ultimately went with the HubSpot sales hub um, because it was so elegant to use. And as we were training new salespeople and building that infrastructure, um, there were just so many features that were helpful for me as a leader of the organization. HubSpot has done incredible things to make my life as the chief executive very easy. Some of those have been uh, playbooks and making that something that is easily transferred to my growing sales team. Um, some of it, even most recently, were a lot of the HubSpot reporting tools um, to measure sales activity, especially as more and more of our company is working remotely. This is where HubSpot really came in as a handy um, you know, support for us in making the transition to more of a truly fully digital um, you know, lead generation process. It's been a really crazy year and HubSpot has helped us thrive through this crisis by just being really nimble and able to take our in-person you know, marketing and sales strategies and completely convert them into something 
you can deliver and execute really well online. And I think because we had that infrastructure in place, we were able to rapidly adapt to some of those changes. And we've been able to thrive in this new normal because we've been able to convert so quickly into this digital era. HubSpot has really been something that can serve so many different purposes based on the stage you are in. And you know where I am now, again, I'm not in a direct uh, marketing or sales role. I'm still finding every day that there's new functionality that helps me be better at my new job. And as I think about all the things that are gonna be needed for me to continue scaling this company, um, I've got everything that I need in this platform and just need to invest in more of those things as the time is appropriate and when it's needed. To power whatever new normal you're trying to achieve, Sales Hub Enterprise includes an enterprise-grade CRM that matches the way your business works, starting with custom objects, which I'm excited to announce are now available in HubSpot. With custom objects, you can store any data in HubSpot, including subscriptions, students, shipments, anything you can think of. No matter how your business changes, custom objects are flexible enough to adapt with you. Here's the best part. Custom objects work just like standard objects in HubSpot. So you can easily create and manage them, set up workflows, and run reports on custom object data. Now, custom objects are especially useful to sales, but they have endless use cases across marketing and service too. That's why they're now in beta across all enterprise accounts. To protect the integrity of all that data, you can create granular permissions on all of your CRM data, including, for the first time, field-level permissions on your properties. Today, with custom objects and advanced permissions, you have the flexibility and control to build and scale your business right on HubSpot. But what about sales reps? In my experience, reps spend most of their time wrangling their CRM and entering data, not selling. That's why Sales Hub Enterprise doesn't just provide the power sales leaders and sales ops need. It also provides the ease of use that sales reps want so they can spend less time managing software and more time connecting with customers. Sales Hub Enterprise supercharges your sales reps with AI. For example, HubSpot's artificial intelligence automatically scans a prospect's email signature and pulls all the relevant information, name, job title, company, right into CRM. A lot of companies promise AI, but HubSpot AI is tangible, practical, and valuable. AI takes some work off your sales reps' plates. For the rest, HubSpot's sales engagement tools make the daily routine even more efficient. Think a more robust mobile app, bulk enrollment and sequences, improved sales navigator integration, and much more. To help reps close more deals faster, we've enhanced the Configure Price Quote, or CPQ, feature set in Sales Hub Enterprise by making our quotes more customizable and the product library much more flexible. Sales Hub Enterprise also works effortlessly alongside your accounting software. With a new set of accounting integrations and APIs, you can create invoices, associate tax codes, use multi-currency syncing, and much more with your favorite accounting software directly from the HubSpot deal record. We have new native integrations with QuickBooks and NetSuite, new third-party connections with global accounting partners like Xero and Newbox, and a brand new set of accounting APIs to enable connection with your back office system of choice. To tie everything together and optimize for the future, your sales leaders need total visibility into their rep performance and deal pipeline. Sales Hub Enterprise brings together all your sales data and arms your sales leaders with everything they need to plan their year. The all new sales analytics tool gives you rich insights into the overall health of your sales pipeline so you can coach your team and improve outcomes over time. And the new sales forecasting rolls up team performance and allows for manual adjustment so you can create dynamic sales forecasts that won't compromise accuracy for ease of use. Best of all, it includes a rep view, so managers can hone in on individual rep performance in their coaching sessions and one-on-ones. For far too long, companies have turned to sales CRMs that are powerful and well-known, but painful and not well-liked. At HubSpot, we believe you shouldn't have to settle for bloated CRM software. Sales Hub Enterprise is easy to use and loved by all. It eliminates friction, brings tools together, 
puts people before process and empowers sales teams to do their best work, helping increase efficiency and sales. No wonder it's a leader across every segment on G2, including enterprise, and is number one in satisfaction across all these segments. We are just getting started. The new Sales Hub Enterprise, featuring custom objects and so much more, is now available. Today we heard from just a few companies that are learning to adapt in the headwinds of change. And we saw how HubSpot's new products will help companies not just survive, but thrive in the new normal. Throughout every change that may come your way, our promise is to be right there beside you, growing better together. The way you have traditionally built an enterprise software company, there's kind of a playbook, and it's largely you're buying companies. You're kind of using acquisitions to kind of build up your product and you kind of cobble it together and you get that enterprise power on the back end but you also get that enterprise front end I think the future of, of software I think it's gonna I think it's finally going to change where you build it from the ground up you hand craft it from the ground up yep and you build it internally with love and you'll get that nice consumer front end matched I think you can really match that now with an enterprise backend. I think you're totally right. I think the operative word in this, in this new age is easy. Yeah. So you look at uh, Zoom as an example. Zoom didn't invent video conferencing. Yeah. They simplified it. Simplified it to the degree that not only could kids use it, but their parents could actually use it too. It actually, like, people know how to, <laughs> yes. how to use Zoom. And I think too, for too long, enterprise companies have been kind of hiding behind this, oh, but it's supposed to be complicated and our, our buyers are really demanding. Yeah, tr you know, there's nothing more demanding than toddlers and teens, you know, in terms of the software. <laughs> That's a demanding group, right? Uh, people of all sizes use Zoom, of all sizes use Slack. There's this new generation of software companies that are more like Apple than the old school tech companies. I think that's exactly right. The, to your point about the flexibility in our days, our schedules are so fluid, our lives are so intertwined that it blurs this distinction between business software and consumer software. And the business experiences need to be as seamless as everything else that we use in our daily lives. We're going from Instagram to Zoom to Postmates to Slack, back and forth all day. When there's friction there, it's much more obvious than when we were sitting in a cube nine to five, putting up with what's on our screen in front of us. It's interwoven into our lives and it needs to just work. People have been talking about the consumerization of, so of enterprise software for a long, long time now. It's here. And I think there's going to be a whole new breed of companies that go the exact opposite way where it's really easy to buy, it's easy to set up, it's easy to use, and it's easy to own. And I think that'll be the future. I think things are going to change. Oh, I think you're so right. If I roll the clock way back to the early days of inbound, one of the things we saw was that mark the career of the marketer was changing. I'm starting to see a similar shift inside companies around this kind of revenue ops person. Think about the people we work with every day. And they've really shifted from five years ago, 10 years ago, being stuck in spreadsheets and yeah. at their desk with their headphones on, pulling one-off reports. Totally. And now they're in the room. It's become this very creative, technical job. Yeah. It'd be cool to bring that change out into the world. Yeah, I would say, I think the, the revenue operations, sales operations people, I think that career is going to explode yes. inside of companies. They're going to go from like the unsung heroes to the MVPs. What do you think? You know, in order for companies to grow better, they need to run better. And that's all about ops. So instead of being unsung heroes, I think we need to sing more songs about ops. I think, we need to sing those. I think what we need to do is kind of similar to marketing, where we need to build the methodology and the tool set and build that career and help those people grow in their career. I think that's, a, that's an interesting opportunity for us and for inbound attendees. Certainly an interesting year. When we look back on it, how do you think this year will be remembered? Clearly it's a time of massive challenge. I'm hoping that there will be a lot of inspiration, a lot of creativity, and an opportunity to solve problems in a new way. And frankly, we hope to be a part of it and power a lot of that innovation that's going to come. Yeah, I think we want to build that platform and give the knowledge to people to take advantage of these changes. And we have to hope or believe that there's some opportunity that comes as part of that. Absolutely. I think when we look back at this time, we'll, we will recognize it a time of great change and of great challenge but also of great creativity. And this is what the human species is really good at, is getting through the tough times and saying, you know what? We're adaptable, resilient. We're gonna, we've been through a bunch of pain this year, but it's kind of set us up for a bunch of progress. Yeah. What we're trying to do with Inbound and HubSpot is we're trying to arm people to not just survive in the new normal, but thrive in the new normal with the methodology, with the knowledge, 
and with the tool set to, to really grow better. Light on the set. Five, soft six. Okay, let's do it. I would argue that you need to move to a model that's much more virtual, where you're managing by metrics, and I the answer up. I'm not sure you guys noticed, but there's a noise in the background. <laughs> <laughs> you noticed? <laughs> As you thrive in the new normal and create an entire, nope, 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 okay. Sorry. Let's do it again. How have buyers changed? You need to start walking. <laughs> Sorry, like, one more time. <laughs> I'm just waiting for it, it's like, okay. <laughs> All right, somebody say action. I think they want you in the seat, though, don't they? Ah, f <laughs> Christopher's like, ah, f you okay? And you can automate, and as always, and you can automate your ticket process. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, you're right. It feels a little bit surreal, but it's exciting. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. I... No, no, yeah. you need something better than that. I, I do need something. I thought we were just practicing. Oh, yeah. I'm feeling good. I'm cautiously optimistic. You just said that. Yeah. I should say something slightly different. I think smarter would be better. Smarter. Maybe optimistically cautious. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Growing together. Better. Nope. To build and scale your hub, your, your hub spot with your business. Ask any question, I'm gonna give you the same answer. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> Darmesh, Darmesh came with his A game. Trying to make Jira sound exciting. <laughs> Here we go. Darmesh, do you think there's an opportunity for opportunity in the opportunity? <laughs> <laughs>